God, yeah. We surrender all to you, God. Not my will, but yours, God. I give my all to you, yeah. I give my all to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Come on, surrender. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender it all to you. Withholding nothing. Everybody, come on, say withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise in this house. Heavenly Father, as we just, as we're in the time of praise and worship, Lord, we are reminded that we can't do this on our own. We are reminded of our true and utter reliance on you, Heavenly Father. And it's not a burden. It is actually, in fact, a wonder. It's a great feeling to know that we rely on such a great God who is in control of everything. So, Lord, I just want to say thank you for welcoming us for quickly pulling us into you the minute we decide to come back to you Lord Lord you make us lose sins but it's for, greater, it's for the greater good Lord because you are the greatest gain oh Lord we learn that coming to you with holy nothing means we're just coming to you as we are Lord and you will do the change in us you'll do the work in us Lord Jesus I just want to say thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just that's as much as I can say. Thank you. Giving me a heart of praise, giving us all a heart of praise, giving us all a warm heart, taking the stone cold, hard heart of us and giving us a heart of flesh with your spirit as well as a plus to it, O Lord. Jesus, thank you for doing the thing that none of us could ever do for our sake, O Lord, for the sake of us, for the sake of our salvation, for the sake of our souls. You purchased our souls with, with, a, with, a, with your life, oh Lord. You came into this world. You descended into this world. All God and also all human. You know, so you know our weaknesses. You know our struggles. You know it all. God, you are just such a relatable God. Yes, God. You know our pains. You know our sorrows. Not only did you create us, but you also lived as, as among us, Lord. You understand what we what our, our burdens and yet you still say come to me and I'll give you rest Jesus thank you for being such a great God thank you for being such a great God Lord humble our hearts convict us bring us closer to you don't let us don't don't let us turn away from you thank you Jesus it's in your name I pray Amen. Y'all may be seated. Sorry. Sorry about that. y'all doing today? I loud it, yeah, I know I loud. Y'all good? Y'all alive? Y'all well? I see some new faces. Welcome you, welcome to the chapel, guys. Thank you for coming. That's good. That's great. So, let me just start by saying, well, I already said welcome, but now you say it again. Welcome, everyone. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? So, sorry, but we don't have no games to play today. So, if y'all came to play games, no. Y'all came to praise the Lord. With that being said, we we have a video regarding Black History Month. 
Is that ready? No? Okay. Well, that's, well, well, that's in the works. I can move on to the announcements. Starting on with Tuesday, there is no InterVarsity Bible study. However, we are having an open mic. Same time, same place. We're having an open mic. It's called Open Mic for Christ. So if you want to sing, if you want to dance, if you want to do poetry, if you want to even give a little, a little quick sermon, if you want to do a little skit, if you want to rap, if you want to play an instrument, if you want to do any of these things, it's, it's not even open, it's a talent show. We'll just call it a talent show. How about that? That, that sounds better? The talent show for Christ. Rehearsals, if you, want, if you want to participate in that, feel free to talk to any of the varsity leaders. And rehearsals are, is that Monday, on, or sorry, on Monday tomorrow at the B1 lobby. That's Building 1 lobby at 6 p.m. Following that is Wednesday, Bible Study Fellowship. It's 6 p.m. at the Lehman Auditorium, no, it's at the Lehman Building, room 114. Following that, on March 1st, there will be a March Madness weigh-in. That's in the chapel at 10 a.m. The Brotherhood, March 2nd and March 16th, for all the men who must know I'll be a, man of, a true man of God. That will be, that will remember those dates, March 2nd and March 16th. Graceful Transformation, March 3rd and March 17th. That's for the women who I know will be a woman of God. And on Saturday, at, at March 4th, at 1 p.m., there will be a campus evangelism. March and March, sorry, March 19th, at 11 a.m., there will be a special service. Not much to say about that, but be sure to come out. They'll be at the chapel. And now we're, and now we're going to... Start with a video for Black History Month. So let's tune in on the projector screen. black church in America begins on an east coast ocean dock. dark skin derided a daddy and his children divided right there on an auction block the black church in America begins in a field beneath the sun shackled sons and daughters hearing about the Father's love. The black church in America forced to toil and till the sod while the same ones holding the whip told them to put your faith in God. And by grace alone, they did. melody of the Negro spirituals, they found the faith to carry on, to flourish, to fight, to exist, to exhort, the faith to follow Harriet running rivers to the north, a faith that echoed Augustine and those great African theologians from a thousand years before on the other side of the ocean. The faith to be free in Christ, even when your country denies you liberty. The faith to never give up, never give up your human dignity. It was the faith for Frederick Douglass to hop a train and escape to freedom, and then proclaim the will of God in the presence of President Lincoln. It was a faith to war and wait for an Emancipation Proclamation, a faith that made Juneteenth the most holy celebration. It's the faith to begin again, with Jesus at the center, 
It's the faith to start the black church because no other church would even let you enter. It's the preaching of Lemuel Haynes, a first of its kind in this nation. It's Francis Grimke and Gardner Taylor resisting segregation. It's a praise song from brown bodied lips, both layman and ecclesiastic. It's the anthem of all the mamas when Emmett Till was in the casket. It's Mahalia Jackson singing, Precious Lord, take my hand. It's blood on Edmund Pettus Bridge and all across this land. It's a faith that God can surely redeem what's happened in the past. It's the faith of Martin Luther King. I'm free. I'm free at last. The faith of C.T. Vivian, Joseph Lowry, Rosa Parks, those beautiful black lights of Jesus shining in the dark. To God be the glory, the sole future of our faith. The foundation of Tony Evans and the fire of T.D. Jakes. The song of the Clark sisters, Andre Crouch, Donnie McClurkin, B.B., C.C., Yolanda, and G.P. Are you with me, Kirk Franklin? It's the legacies of John M. Perkins, Crawford Loritz, and the soul's desire of Dr. Darius Daniels, Lisa Fields, Priscilla Shire. It's a history of resilience, revival, reconciliation. It's the Holy Spirit raising up a future generation who will carry this thing. The church of Jesus is stronger, more beautiful, bold, and diverse because of the lasting, living, legacy, the faith of the black church. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Say, set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more. I want more of you. I want more of you. Say, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more. I want more. Yeah. I want more. Say, say the fire. That I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you. I want more of you. Say, I want more. I want more of you, God. Come on. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more. More of you. They set a fire. Holy fire, we need you to burn. Cause I want more of you. Say, set a fire. That I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Come on, set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that 
I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. I want more, I want more, say I want more of you, Lord I want more of you God, I want more of you God, more of you, I want more of you God, more, more, more of you. Just a little more of you, God. Come on. I want more. Say, I want more of you. I want you to fill me up, God. I want more of your healing, God. I want more of your power, God. I want more of your spirit, God. That I can't control. I want more of you. Everybody say, I want more. I want more of you. Say, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. I want more. I want more of you, God. Last time. I want more. God, we want more of you. And Lord God, we're going to stay right here in this moment. Because God, we're not going to leave the same way that we came in. So God, give us more of you, God. Our, Our hands are open, God. Take away anything that's taken up your space, God. And God, pour into us afresh. God, we want to be on fire, God. We want to be focused, God. We want to we want to feel your presence, God. Your presence is better than life, God. And so, Lord, here we are asking God for more of you, Lord. Will you meet us here, Lord? God, we remove all distractions from our mind and And Lord God, all we see is you, Lord God, high and lifted up. And as the the angels and the cherubim, as they are singing, holy, 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 God, so are we, God. It's not about anything that we're doing in in this season, God. It's not about us. It's not about what we have on. And it's not about who's sitting next to us, Lord God. This is a desperate plea for more, God. Set a fire down in our souls. God, one that we can't contain and one that we can't control, God, we'll take our shoes off. As you told Moses, for it's holy ground, God, we'll we'll make room for you, Lord God. We don't want it to be business as usual, and God, we don't want to, to not hear your voice, but God, we are here with our eyes fixed on you. We're here with hearts of expectation, God. So the altar is open. My friends, the altar is open. If that's you and you want to come and you want to to call out to God for yourself, if you want to kneel down, if you want to release something, I want to let you know the altar is open right now. You come on up and and I want to ask that you sing that or whatever the Lord is leading you to sing. Because we're going to stay in this moment.
Minister Kathy, Minister Akil. I want to ask that you stand up here. We're going to pray for some of our students today. We're just going to stop right here. I want you to come on up if you want prayer. Tasha, if you want to join to pray for some of our students. like prayer, I invite you to come stand with Minister Kathy. I'll pray for you. Tasha, Miss Tasha's up here.
opportunity for us to just press in and I believe that this word is going to bless you as we continue to press in you didn't miss an opportunity if you sat down don't worry we are here we'll pray for you some more after service you didn't miss an opportunity if you have your bible first Samuel chapter 10 we are still talking about elevation and today we are talking about something very, very important for each and every one of us, from the preacher all the way down to the smallest child. And that is interruptions for elevation. So we're going to read about somebody who is supposed to go upward. They're supposed to have this transformation and they're supposed to be in this great leadership role, and then they are interrupted. And so 1 Samuel 10, 20 through 24, it says, When Samuel had all Israel come forward by tribes, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 13, 13 through 14, it says, You have done a foolish thing, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now, your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. What a tough, tough reality that we can be given this great opportunity from God only to make decisions that are against his will and lose everything. We are not invincible we are not able to rely on mercy until we can just do whatever we want and get and still get the plan and the promise God has for us. It doesn't work that way. 
when we are trying to accomplish a goal, say we want to lose weight and, and, and get healthy, if we stop doing what we need to do and we stop exercising and we stop eating right, we interrupt the plan. If we're in school and we're trying to go to those classes and we're trying to get an A and we want to have a, a great semester, if we just stop going to class, we interrupt the plan and the goal that we had. If we are trying to, to, to build a relationship and we're putting forth effort and we're doing well and, and we're, we're engaging in, in, in that relationship with our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our friend, whoever it is, and then we just pull back and just stop talking to the person altogether, we stop engaging in patience and, and unconditional love, we interrupt the plan. There are interruptions to elevation. And Saul, unfortunately, experiences that kind of interruption. And so Saul is given this wonderful transformation. We talked about it last week. He is looking for his father's donkeys. God says, I'm going to give him a chance. He's kind of got it together. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's in the right place. He's, he's got some good qualities that I, I think could take him far. Did God know that Saul was going to mess it up? Absolutely. Was God good enough, gracious enough to still give him a chance? Absolutely. And so you and I, maybe we are not perfect like we want to be. Maybe we're not going to cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's. But if we stay with God, if we keep submitting, if we keep surrendering, if we keep laying all of our desires on the altar and all of our, our temptations and all of our tests, if we keep going to the altar and coming before God, we can make it. It's okay to struggle. The struggle is a good thing. But it is not okay when we give up the struggle. It's not okay when we stop fighting and we stop wrestling. Because when you stop wrestling, somebody won. And unfortunately, it's not always the spirit. So Saul gets the opportunity, even though he's going to mess it up, God says, I'm going to give him the opportunity. And then while Saul is in his position, there's, God, there's just some things that don't go right. And I want to start off by talking about one interruption that we see at the very beginning. One interruption, Saul's insecurity. 1 Samuel 10, 20 through 24, it says, When Samuel had all Israel come forward by tribes, the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. So this is where, where he's about to announce Saul as king. Then he brought forward the tribe of Benjamin. Clan by clan, and Matri's clan was taken. Finally, Saul, son of Kish, was taken. But when they looked for him, he was not to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord, has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself among the supplies. Saul is hiding behind the stuff. Verse 23, they ran and brought him out, and as he stood among the people, he was a head taller than any of the others. Samuel said to all the people, do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. Then the people shouted, long live the king. Everybody sees something else. But when Saul looks at himself, he sees someone who's inadequate, incapable. He sees someone who's unable, and he's hiding behind the luggage. So God has, told, has chosen Saul, and he's head and shoulders above everybody, but he's hiding. What does this do for Saul's career, this insecurity that hasn't been dealt with? Saul is unable to find a, a sure ground. He's unable to, to walk in the, the purpose that he has. He's unable to, to be confident in the face of somebody else who, who comes along looking like, like he's, he's got some good leadership. Saul has an insecurity problem. When you and I have insecurity issues and we are hiding 
behind the luggage, when we never allow God to change the way we see ourselves, and we never let God speak into who we are, and we hold that baggage that I'm not good enough, that I can't do it, that I'm scared of the people, that I want them to like me, that I'm not, I'm not the right one. When we hold those thoughts into our mind, they become interruptions for elevation. They become obstacles for us rising up to the men and the women that God created us to be. Surely you're a king and a priest. Surely you are made a little lower than the angels. Surely you're somebody because if Jesus Christ would come down and die on a cross just for you, then, then you've got to know you're somebody to God. And if you let the world tell you who you are, and you let the music tell you who you are, and you let the, the commercials tell you who you are, then you are interrupted on your path to your purpose. And not only does insecurity cause an interruption, but Saul has an impatience problem. Anybody else in here have an impatience problem? <laughs> Saul has an impatience problem. 1 Samuel 13, 8 through 12. Saul remained at Gilgal, and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. They're about to go to war, and he really needs a sacrifice made, and he's waiting. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul's men began to scatter, so the people started leaving. They're like, look, we don't have, we don't have the priest with the sacrifice. I'm not about to die out here. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived. And Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you didn't come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. The war is about to happen, and Samuel is just not there on time. He said seven days, and it's seven days, and Saul's like, you know what? I got to make some moves. I got to do this. And he, with his impatience, I mean, he was kind of patient, but he just took matters into his own hands. Sometimes our impatience can move us out of our elevation. Sometimes our impatience can cause interruptions. God, you said it would happen by that time, or I thought it should happen by that time. God, I wanted to, to, to have this thing done in a way that I thought, God, my timeline, Lord God, my biological clock is ticking, and all of the stuff that we bring to God because of our impatience. And what happens is that we start seeing things around us start falling apart or, or start moving out of place, just like Saul saw all of his guys were going back. And we move ahead of God. God, I, I don't feel happy. I'm not good in this space. And Lord God, I know you're going to bring me somebody, but I'm going to see what this guy or this girl is dealing with because I, I don't know how long you're going to take. God, I want to date this person and see. Maybe, you know, maybe I, I, I'll find somebody. And we move out of the will of God because we can't wait on God. Somebody say, wait on God. I love that this happens, and it's, it's, it's at the nick of, in the nick of time, Samuel shows up. Is he late? No. He is there right after the offering is made. Sometimes we feel like God's not going to do it, but right at the very end of the wait, he shows up. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Don't let impatience move you out of the will of God. If God says wait, then you wait. If God says stay, then you stay. If God says, I, I'm going to be the one to give you the answer, you wait until God gives you the answer. You make sure that you stay in place. But not only do we see that Saul has moved out of his place because of his insecurity and his impatience, but finally, we see insubordination. Verse, uh, 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 3. 
Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people, Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and do only destroy a little bit. No. He says, and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death the men, women, children, and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. And then we see verse 7. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves, the lambs, everything that was good. They were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. So later on, God says, go and destroy all of these people and destroy everything. And Saul thinks that he can just leave the king alive and leave all the best of the things alive. Later on, Saul's going to say, you know what? I left it alive so I can give it to God as an offering. And that's what we do. That God tells us to do things and we find ways to compromise and we find ways to say, well, you know, I think God's pushing me in this direction or I think this is going to bring glory to God or I'm here to help him in his walk with God. I'm here to help her in her walk with God. We find things to say that will help to, to justify our partial obedience. Somebody say partial obedience is disobedience. If I'm just going to do it the part of the way, it's not going to count as obedience. One of the things that I used to hate doing was washing the dishes at, when I was with my mom. And I would wash those dishes, and I would think I did a good job. But when she would come to the sink, she would see that I didn't dump out that little, that little drain. I hated dumping that out. And she would say, you didn't wipe the sink. You didn't dump out that drain. You didn't wipe the counters. And I was thinking, but I did the dishes like you asked. Partial obedience never gets us anywhere. God wants our full obedience. If he said, take it all out, take it all out. If he says, make that move, make that move. Even if it hurts us, even if we think we know better, even if we think we're, we've got the strategy, we have to allow the word of God to be fully accomplished, fully fulfilled in our lives. And so I leave you with this. Don't let elevation become bigger than adoration. So we're talking about elevation, and we are going to believe God that we're going to get there. We believe God that he's got great plans for us. But we must remember that we are not invincible, that we could really disrupt the plan of God and interrupt the plan of God for our lives. That he wants, he has the best for us. He really does. He's got the best life for you. He's got the best purpose for you. He's got the best partner for you. He's got the best experiences for you. And what you see right here and right now, this is how you get there. That even in these everyday moments, that I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to, I'm going to be patient with God. I'm going to obey God. And I am going to walk in my God-given authority. I'm going to hold my head up. And I'm going to walk in this room. And I'm going to walk on this campus knowing who I am. And I'm not going to just walk it out physically how I, I, I enter the room, but also in my character. I'm going to walk this thing out. It's not easy, but I'm, every, t every day I'm showing up to the altar. God, it's not easy, but take it. God, the desire is here, but God, take it. God, I'm tempted to get back with people who, who insult me. God, take it. That is the worship that God is looking for. That is the worship that, that touches his heart. 
Jesus says he's looking for worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus says that you are, you are my disciples and I know you love me if you obey my commands. So God, what do I do when it gets really hard? And I, 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 my flesh is winning. Just like it was said, you, you're not going to fight. As Jabari prayed, you're not going to fight in and of your own power. But you're going to let the Holy Spirit cover you. And you're going to let the Holy Spirit keep you. And the Holy Spirit's going to take the taste out of your mouth. But it just takes you opening up yourself to God. I surrender all to you. Because if you're holding your fist closed... He's not going to pry it out of your hand. If you're holding on to that person and God said, let him go, your whole life could be destroyed because you weren't subordinate. You weren't bringing yourself under the will of God. Is it worth it, Saul? The fact that you, you struggle with the traumas of your life and you thought yourself small, was it worth it? The fact that you were impatient and you had your own mind and your own way, and if God takes too long, I'm going to do it myself, was it worth it, Saul? As he dies on his sword, no, it's not worth it. And Saul, you wanted to keep King Agag alive and all the best of the livestock, and you wanted to make that business move. You wanted to do things that you thought were the right way, even though God said don't do it that way. Was it worth it? And as he dies on his sword, the answer is no. God said, I regret that I, that I made him the king. God says, I'm, I'm choosing somebody else. My prayer for each and every one of us in here is that you will not experience the interruptions to your elevation. All you have to do is keep your hand in God's hand. All you have to do is do it God's way. Is it going to be easy? No. It's not going to be easy. Because our flesh is going to want the other stuff. And our hearts are going to want the other stuff. And the other stuff is just going to feel real good. But you submit to God. And you resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. I invite you to stand all over this chapel. <clears throat> ask if you want to have a time of prayer. Maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you want to recommit to God. Maybe this hits home for you in some way and you don't want to be like Saul who loses everything. I ask that you meet me at the altar. If you want to commit to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you don't have a real relationship but you want one, I ask you to meet me at the altar. And if you want to, if you want to, to plug in to any of our ministries, I invite you to meet me at the altar. Every head bowed, every, eyes clo every eye closed. God, what a tough word that you gave it to Saul, but you had to take it back. Man. God, we don't want that to happen to us. We don't want you to reclaim any of the blessings that you have in store for us. We don't want you to look at us and determine that we're not in it for the right reason, that, that we're not people after your own heart, that we're going to mess it up and do it our way, that we've forgotten about you. So I pray for these young men and women all over this chapel. I pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is that's about to disrupt and interrupt the plans you have for them, God, I pray that you will give them the strength to give it to you. I pray that they know give it to you while it's tough. Give it to you while it's difficult, because that's where you get all the honor. 
That's where you get all the glory. That's where they prove themselves that they are truly men and women after your own heart. Let them give it to you while it's hot. Not while they don't care about it. Not while it's a passing memory. Let them give it to you while it's difficult. God is not of you. It's not from you. It's not like you. So I give it to you. And I trust you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to keep me. I trust you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to help me. I trust you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to honor the sacrifice. God, we don't want to be like Saul who messes up everything and loses the throne and loses the blessings and loses the honor. God, we want to be like Jesus, who from the time he started, to the time he finished, even though it was hard and challenging, he makes it all the way to the cross where he bows his head and declares that it is finished. God, help us to finish this thing. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Help us to finish this thing. God, we're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up. Help us to finish this thing strong. And thank you that it doesn't end there. But that three days later after he is buried and in the tomb, that you show us that when we give it our all, when we fully surrender and when we fully submit and sacrifice for your glory, God, you give us the crown. God, you give us the glory. God, you give us the blessing on Sunday morning when Jesus gets up, he gets up with all power in his hands. He gets up with all the glory. He, he takes his seat at the right hand of you, Lord. I pray for that glory for each and every one of the students who's carrying their cross. I pray that every time they fall down, God, that you will help them to get back up, Lord God. I pray that they see that Jesus did it. And if Jesus can do it, so can they. They're operating out of the power of the Lord, not of their strength. And so God, rise up in them. Allow them to submit to you and resist the devil. And he'll flee in nothing and no one, no devil in hell, no plot from Satan can get in the way of their elevation. God, we'll adore you. Adoration before elevation. Adoration for elevation. God, you are worthy of our praise and worthy of our sacrifices. You are worthy of our lives, worthy of every hard decision we'd ever make. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we praise God? You're going to stay strong by coming to chapel. You're going to stay strong by going to InterVarsity's meetings on Tuesdays and praying with us on Monday nights. I text you the number. You're going to stay strong by going to Bible study fellowship and by finding some like-minded people, but you've got to stay strong. Do not let anything interrupt what God is doing in your life. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be something to talk about. I promise you that. I ask that you will stand to your feet. We're going to get our benediction. We are going to have service on Sunday coming. We are going to do it here. It is going to be the Sunday before um, spring break. Raise your hand if you will be here. Okay. Raise your hand if you will not be here. Okay, we're going to have service on Sunday before spring break. I want to ask you guys to make sure on March 19th, you're here, we're celebrating President Hardrick. And he's going to be here, and we got a guest speaker, and we want our students to pack the house, and we want to give a special presentation to him, okay? So please be here, tell your friends, tell your family. And we are looking forward to our way in. If you want to get healthy... We're going to weigh in on March 1st at 10 o'clock in the chapel. If you want to win a prize, bring $10 with you. Bring $20 if you're not a student. But if you're a student, bring $10. The, the winner gets a cash prize. Um, and so we'll have a scale. We'll mark your numbers. Weigh in. Nobody will know. And I am in the challenge, too. So let us receive our benediction. Now unto him 
who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence of glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, and all who love the Lord, say amen. Amen, amen. If you want prayer, we're here. And God bless you. Hug somebody. And we will see you next week Sunday.